Check one, check. Good morning, good morning. Let's give God some praise for being here today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give him praise. He's worthy of our praise. Thank you. Praise God. We give God all the honor, all of the praise today for allowing us another chance to come together. Amen. We want to honor all of uh, our Reverend clergy today, Reverend Kitchen, Elder Bradshaw. Amen. And to all the other uh, Reverend clergy that are out there and to you, my father's children, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. All right, let's bring in the Holy Spirit this morning that we might have a joyous time. So at this time, toot your horns for this male quartet. <laughs> that came to lift up the name of Jesus on today. Come on, honk your horns if you came to lift up the Savior. Up 
pray. Go and pray to the Father. Go and pray to the Son. Tell them about this world. Come on, give this male quartet another hand. <laughs> amen, amen. We praise God for them being up, amen, this morning on the scene. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Master, for life, health, and strength, for the visitation of your Holy Spirit. Oh, God, you've been so good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And we just come today and say much obliged for all that you've done for us. Now, Master, come and be in the midst today. Search our hearts and search our minds. And if you find anything that's not right, we pray that I would remove it right now. Let your Holy Spirit rule, guide, and direct that everything that is said and done here today, that your name will get the glory. Father, we pray for the preached man today, that you give him preaching power. Let your Holy Ghost preach to him that we might hear a word from heaven. We might be saved, might be delivered, we might be set free. Come, Holy Spirit, and do what you do best. Show up and show out, and we know everything will be all right. Amen, amen. Come on, give God some praise today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Reverend Kitchen is going to come with our scripture. Amen. Then, Father, we'll have another selection from this male quart quartet. Amen. If you would, please turn with us to the first book of the Bible, Genesis. The first book of the Bible, Genesis, chapter 37. Chapter 37. We will begin reading at verse 1. Genesis chapter 37, beginning at verse 1. Jacob lived in the land where the father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob's family line. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flock with his brothers, the sons of Behel, and the sons of Zephath, his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons 
because <clears throat> he had been born to him in his old age. And he had made an ordinate robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream. And when he told it, his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the fields when suddenly my chef rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him and all the more because his dream, he had said, then he had another dream and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream and this time the sun and the moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. And when he told his father, as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, what is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word for the good and the edifying of our souls. Amen. Amen. Give our cause a hand as they come. in your car. Let me hear your horns one time. Let me hear them horns one time. Not gonna let you go to you. Not gonna let you go until you. Well, if you don't bless me, Lord, I can't make it at all. Please, Lord, Try that one more time. Not gonna let you go to you. Bless me. Not gonna let you go to you. Bless me. Well, if you don't bless me, Lord, I can't make it at all. Please, Lord, please, please, please bless me. I got faith in you, faith in you. and I trust you too. I trust you too. I'm gonna sit and wait. I'm gonna sit and wait. You're never too late. I'm going to say right here to you, bless me. I'm going to say right here to you, bless me. Well, if you don't bless me, Lord, I can't make it at all. Please, Lord, please, please, bless me. I'm not going to let you go to you, bless me. Not going to let you go to you. I trust you too. I trust you too. I'm gonna sit and wait. You're never too late. Please, Lord, please, 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 bless me. I got faith in you. And I trust you too. I'm gonna sit and wait. You're never too late. I got a lot of family, bless me, Lord. and they 
Bless me, Lord. Amen. How many want the Lord to bless you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Again, we're so happy to see all of you here today. For it is a blessing that we're able to gather and to give God praise right out here in the parking lot. Amen. We thank God for beautiful weather. He, he's been blessing us now ever since we started outside. We haven't been rained on, so give God some praise for that. Amen. Amen. We, we just want to remind you, normally next Sunday would be quiet day. Amen. But because of this pandemic, we haven't been able, amen, to have the choirs to sing. And so we trying to uh, Im implement something that will help encourage the choirs to keep moving on. So on next Sunday, uh, they will be presenting you some songs, amen. So we ask that you would be present uh, just to encourage the choirs that we still thinking about them, amen. Um, we want to remind you again about for our Sunday school a conference call uh, on Sunday mornings at 9.30 and then our Bible study on Wednesday at uh, 6 p.m. and uh, our conference prayer service on uh, Saturday evening at 7 p.m. We ask that you would please tune in those times that we might fellowship together, that we might let the Lord know that we need him in our lives. Amen. Um, we want to take this opportunity to just recognize uh, all of those that might have a birthday in the month of September or having a birthday. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Deacon Robert Stewart, on tomorrow he will turn 80 years old. So let's praise God for him. Amen. <laughs> praise God. Amen. And also I just want to take this opportunity too to thank all of you for your cards and your gifts for my birthday which was September 1st. I appreciate everything that you have given uh, unto me. Thank you so very much. Now if you have a birthday in the month of September, please toot your horn. Amen, amen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear saints. Happy birthday to you. Praise God, praise God. May you have many, many more days of happiness. Anyone had a wedding anniversary in the month of September? Toot your horn. All right. First Lady Steve and myself will be married on the 29th, 40 years. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you so very much. Amen. All right. Um, let us not forget those on our prayer list. Keep, keep them lifted in prayer. Uh, Deacon Eddie Hayes, 
sister who's in Mississippi. She has the coronavirus. She's recovering. As you know, uh, one of his sisters passed a few weeks ago. So please keep that family in your prayers. Please pray for Deacon Russell Vaughn, who had a fall last week, and he's recovering at home. Pray for him. Mother Beers, who suffered a mini stroke, pray for her. Deacon Holman, a man, keep him in prayer as he's recovering. Deacon Dorsey Johnson, keep him in prayer. He's recovering. Uh, he might be here today. Blow your horn if you're here today. Amen. All right. He is here today. Let's thank God for him. Pray for our usher, Sister Angie Smith, who had a stroke as she recovers. Sister Angela Young's mother uh, has lung cancer. Pray for her. Uh, Deacon S. Ann and Deacon Robert Stewart and family. Pray for Deacon and Deacon S. Brooks. Uh, Deacon S. Karen Arm. Armstrong, let's keep her lifted in prayer, who've been diagnosed with uh, cancer. Uh, please keep Sister Doris Gordon, Sister Ollie Lord in Gaston, North Carolina, in your prayers. Uh, Deacon and Deacon, Deacon S. Uh, Ed uh, Kelly, keep them in your prayers. Uh, Sister Brenda Ford, who had surgery, recovering at home. Please keep praying for my cousin, Alfonso Seed and wife. They both have coronavirus. His wife is recovering, and he's uh, on a ventilator. So please keep them lifted in prayer, if you will. Brother Brent Payne Sr., Mary Rice, Mother Wyatt, Mother Young, Sister Ann Lowry, Dr. Peepers, all of those on our concern list, please keep them lifted in prayer. By faith, we still believe prayer works. Amen. So let us keep all of those in our prayers. Uh, how many ready for the word today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have, we have an energetic, we have an energetic, I'm going to call him young man, a man that can preach and will preach. And a man, we want you to give your undivided attention to him, pray for him that God will elevate him to give us a word from on high today. Amen. Uh, before he comes, the male quartet going to sing us another song. And the next voice you will hear will be that of none other than Elder Leon Bradshaw. Let's give him a hand. He going to preach first. I'm sorry. He going to preach first. Amen. <laughs> uh, toot your horn if you're as mixed up as I am up here. <laughs> oh, we bless the Lord this morning. Amen. We bless the Lord this morning. Amen. We serve an awesome God. I ought to have a toot out there if we know that today. He's been mighty good to us. I say he's been mighty good to us. I don't want you to run your battery down, but if God is in the midst of us today, he'll charge that battery back up. Can I get an amen? We bless God today for... For our pastor, Dr. Steed, we praise God for him and for the privilege to come and to share with y'all outdoors. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, I, I know over there in Matthews, they tell us that uh, wherever two or three gather together, he said in my name, he said that he, he, he'd be in the midst. <laughs> and, and, and that meant even outdoors somebody. <laughs> that meant even outdoors, praise the Lord. But I'm grateful for this moment, and I thank God for, for uh, uh, several things this, this, this year. I had another birthday. And uh, 
Amen. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm counting down from 76, y'all. Uh, did I say 76? I mean 77. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. <laughs> say some things you ought to remember, right, Steve? <laughs> Amen. Uh, and uh, this, this, this year, uh, me and the babe, uh, 29, two chihons of 29 years. Is that right, amen? 29? This, this past August, 29 years, the Lord have blessed us. And uh, she's over there. Over there. With, stick your hand out the window, honey. Let me, let me just see. I'm like Elder Kitchens, uh, you know. Amen. And all of you, my father's children. Now, now I, I, I got a time limit, amen, and I'm using up most of it. <laughs> Everybody in the parking lot blew their horns when I said that. <laughs> amen. And I just, I just want to thank God for all of you. Thank God for the baby, amen. And our children, and it's just a blessing. It's just a blessing. Uh, just, a, just a verse of I'm sorry, just a word or two of this is this hymn. If if, if y'all don't mind, uh, Jesus. Seventh chapter of Genesis that has been read in your hearing. There is a verse there that speaks to us this morning.
Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. He's worthy to be praised today, brothers and sisters. He's worthy. He's worthy. And uh, verse 3, just the first clause of verse 3 of chapter 37 of Genesis. It says, now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. If you're familiar with this passage of scripture here recently, on last Sunday, it was part of our church school lesson. Genesis chapter 37 and a few of these verses and the topic of that lesson last Sunday was what's love got to do with it? Y'all right. remember that? <laughs> Amen. Y'all remember, remember that. I don't have to rehearse it to you because all of us done seen that movie. Amen. What's love got to do with it? And and I recollect and I call to our remembrance, there was a, a, a scene in the hotel parking lot where, where uh, Tina and Ike was, was, was in the limousine. And Ike found out in the back of that limousine what love had to do with it. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Tina kind of put a little whooping on, on Ike, and, 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 and right then it brings us to the, to the subject of the lesson for today that love's got everything to do with it. Somebody ought to say amen, love's got everything. There is no trouble like family trouble. Can I get a witness? Y'all y'all out there, y'all ain't never been through no family troubles. Y'all ain't never had to put up with, with family and them, you know, that, that you, you, you're just toot to hone if you didn't have a little issues in your family. <laughs> family trouble is, is, is ultimately, brothers and sisters, the kind of trouble that, that not even the law of the land can sometimes settle. Right. Amen? Right. But there's, there's, there's one thing you don't want to do. You don't want to get in somebody's family mess. Right. I ought to have a witness here. The law can decide and enforce behavior under the threat of penalty. That's what the law does. And praise the Lord. But the one thing the law can't do. The law cannot make us love one another the way we ought to. Can I get an amen from somebody in the parking lot? No matter what we do, no matter what we do, no matter what we say, no matter how many PDs come, they can't make you love. The judge cannot issue out enough years of penalty that can make family members love one another the way that they ought to. The three hardest words. Well, let me put it to you this way. There are three little words. Amen. It's the hardest in the world to get right. There are 11 words people most want to hear on their way from earth to glory. Eleven words folk want to hear. Doctors have been at the bedside, so I can holler along. Doctors have been at the bedside of, of, of dying family members. And their family members on their bed of affliction want to hear. Eleven, well, I, 
11 little words. They want to hear, I'll miss you. Folk in life want to hear, thank you. We want to hear sometimes, I forgive you. And then lastly, the three out of the eleventh says, I love you. At some point in your life, on your way from earth to glory, if you could just hear just some of those words. At some point in your life, you realize that love have everything to do with it. To hear one somebody tell you that I miss you. To hear somebody tell you that there's gratitude enough to say thank you. And to hear someone out of the depths of their heart say I forgive you. And out of that same heart they say I love you. Yeah, you sitting over there in that little black Jeep, I love you baby. If they could hear one of those statements, yet in their everyday lives, these are the three words that all too many people find difficult at times to say. And that is, I love you. The word love has been so often used in the common conversation of our day that it just don't mean that much no more. Did y'all hear what I said? I wonder if love mean as much today as it ought to mean in the lives of us today. Those of you who sitting out there in that car, turn to somebody and say, I love you. Turn to somebody and say, I love you. Turn to somebody and say, I love you. I hear you, mama, I hear you. Christians, thinkers agree that love is the central concept of Christianity. Without love, there can be no Christianity. Why do you say that, Bradshaw? I say that because Jesus said that upon this rock, I'll build my church. Yeah, and the Bible tells us that in the book of Acts, that they were first called Christians yonder in Antioch. Oh, yes, and love is a part of the church. Why is love is a part of the church? But the Bible tells us that God is love. Yeah, yeah. God is love. It goes on to tell us that God so loved the world. Toot your own if you know God did that. God so loved the world that what did he do? He gave his only son. He gave his only son that whosoever believed on him, him who? His son, Jesus. What did Jesus do? Jesus gave his life. You say, I lay down my life. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life. For his friend. Can I get a witness here in the church? Hallelujah. There is love this morning between God and the universe. God spoke, and the universe loved God so much that when God said, Let there be, there was. 
Can I get a witness here in the church? There's love between God and humanity. There's love between God and the church. When the birds get up in the morning, the first thing they do is they tell the Lord, thank you. When the rooster get ready to go to bed at night, the rooster tell God, thank you for another day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all, y'all if y'all don't live in the country, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Everything loves God. There's a love between God and us. And the text tells us this morning that this father loved this son more than all of the rest of the family. And because the father loved this son more than the rest of the family, there was a family situation. Y'all know mom and daddy had their favorites. Amen. Is there anybody out here in this room ever been mama and daddy's favorite? Yeah, yeah, you know you was. You know you was. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I remember when, praise the Lord, uh, I asked Pam for her hand in marriage and uh, Mama looked at me as if to say, boy, you better treat my child right. right. Y'all don't hear me this morning. Everything always, praise the Lord, seemed quiet and peaceful. But when family members get together, have you ever heard of a family reunion where one of the family members didn't get mad at another family reunion and all Hades break loose? You ever been to a birthday party and one family member get mad at another family member and all Hades break loose? But I need you to know today, brothers and sisters, that love will cover a multitude of sins. Love will make a way out of no way. And as we find ourselves this morning in the times that we are in, going through what we are going through, it seems as though God has forgotten about us. Can you imagine almost 7 million People here in America has gone through this pandemic that we call coronavirus 19. 6.6 million Americans have gone through this and it seems like God is not nowhere to be found. Over 197 millions right here in America have died because of this situation. And it seems as though God is not in the midst. We think that when evil comes upon us, that evil always comes. Let me, let, me, let me just say this. We think that when sickness comes, it's all because of Satan and that Satan brings sickness. But Satan may be the agent of sickness, but Satan is not the author of sickness. Y- y- y'all, y'all didn't hear that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Satan may be the carrier and the procurer of some sickness, but God causes all sickness. And I need you to know that this morning. There's somebody thinking that this coronavirus came from Satan. But I need you to know today that when we look back upon the history of man and God, 
God yonder in, yeah, in Egypt land. Steve, you can come help me. When God saw his people and that Pharaoh refused to let his children go. Well. That God ten times put sickness upon, praise the Lord, or in the land. Can I get a witness here in the church? You remember, you remember when Miriam, Moses' sister, called herself getting mad at Moses because Moses married a woman that was not of them. Miriam got mad and began to put family matters in the street and talk about her brother Aaron and Praise the Lord, and the Bible says that Aaron didn't get mad. Give me a seat. Aaron didn't get mad, but God got mad. And the Bible says that God put a sickness on Miriam because of what she had done. You remember Hezekiah, praise the Lord. Yeah, the, the prophet went to Hezekiah and told Hezekiah, put your house in order. For thou shalt surely die. Come on, Steve. Help me here. Help me here. Help me here. Give me a seat right there if you don't mind. And and you remember the story that the prophet man, praise the Lord, told Hezekiah that you are going to die. Ain't the Lord all right? And, yeah, and Hezekiah, I'm trying to get you to understand coronavirus this morning. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall, to the Lord, and said, you know me, Lord. You know I didn't serve you all of my days. Ain't the Lord all right? Yeah, and Hezekiah said, Lord, you know my heart. Love you. Ain't God all right? And I need you to know this morning that love had something to do with what happened next in Hezekiah's life. Yeah, the Lord told the preacher, You go back and tell Hezekiah because. I see his love, and because I love him, I'm going to add 15 more years, ain't God all right, yeah, when sickness come, I wonder this morning, is there anybody in this parking lot today, have had a heart-to-heart talk, with the Lord, didn't he make it all right, didn't he make it all right, is there anybody in this parking lot today, have you fell in love with the Lord, didn't the Lord make it all right, say yeah, toot your horn, if the Lord What does love have to do with COVID-19? I'm glad you asked me, and I want you to know today, Jesus, 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 hung on a cross, and he died, not just for your sin, but I hear the prophet say he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised. I feel like it right here, Pastor. For our inequities, the chastisement of his peace is upon him. And this is the part that I like. Yeah. 
and by his stripes y'all don't have it and by his stripes we'll heal somebody is healed this morning because she love you enough he died COVID-19. Can I get a witness? He died. He died. So you could sit here in this parking lot. He died. I know we got to wear the face mask, but that's all right because God can see through the face mask. I know we got to wear the fast mask, but God can hear through the face mask. Ain't God all right? Ain't he all right? Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Somebody tell God, thank you. He's all right this morning. You ought to tell God, thank you. And you want to know what's love got to do with it? And let me tell you what love got to do with it. Love was with Daniel in the lion's den. Ain't God all right? Love was with that boy down in the hog pen. Ain't God all right? Love was with Job. When he lost all he had, ain't God all right? Love was with Elijah when Jezebel got mad. Ain't God all right? Love is right here on Brownville Road. Can I get a witness? Love is right here in the parking lot. 2879 Brownville Road. That red car yonder. Love is in your car. That gray car back yonder. Love is in your car. That blue truck over yonder. Love is in your truck. Ain't going all right. Love is all around the place. Yeah, love is here. Love is here this morning. Love brought you through. Love got everything to do with it. It was the love of God that's keeping you. Toot your heart if you know. It was the love of God that woke you up this morning. It was the love of God. When you took your test, when you took your test, and you waited on your test, how many in here went and took the test? Blow your horn if you took the test. Yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know the test I'm talking about. To find out if you had the 19, if you done took the test, toot your horn. You was waiting on your test to come back. I'm going to raise up all of mine. Waiting on the test to come back, and it was love mm, that caused the test to come back negative. And even if it came back positive, it was love that kept you. Can I get a witness here in the church? So that's why this morning I need you to know that all of my burdens. Hello, test, test. Fellas, if y'all don't mind. One more time around. All of my burdens.
Come on, give God some praise. Amen. Love has everything to do with it. Amen. What a message today. The message of Joseph always is dear to me to remind me that if you come from a dysfunctioning family, amen, God still have you in mind. And don't let your past mess up your future because God got too much in store for you. Always remember what God has for you. It is for you. Praise God. Give him the branch or another 
toot of your horns, amen, for such a wonderful message today, amen. If you heard that message and you not saved and you want to give your life over to the Lord, we want to give you an opportunity to do so. We wouldn't want you to leave without accepting the love of God into your life. Love makes a difference. Love will change things. Christ offered himself to you as he died on the cross for you. And all he asks that you be submissive. Give your life back to him. If you, that person today, you want to give your life to the Lord, we ask that you pray this prayer with me. Repeat after me, dear Lord, I come to thee, a sinner that needs to be saved. Forgive me, Lord, for all of my sins. Take me and own me as your child. Stir up the gift that is in me that I might do your holy will. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today, you are saved. We ask that you would give your name and phone number to one of these officers out here, and we will get in contact with you and further lead you to the plan of salvation. If you're one that would like to join this church, be a part of the New Hope Missionary Baptist Church, please, as you're leaving, give your name and your phone number to one of these officers, and we will give you a phone call and welcome you into the household of faith. Amen. Very briefly, as we go to the altar, for those names that's been called today, those who are on our sick list, on our concern list, amen, we want you to pray with us. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray, Master, for your healing, for your deliverance. Touch those, Lord, who are on the bed of affliction, those who are going through crisis in their life. Lord, touch in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray for Sister Angie Smith today. Touch her body as she recovers at home to dig in uh, a home. And Lord, touch his body to uh, dig in S. Uh, Armstrong. Father, touch her body. We know that the doctors have diagnosed cancer. But Father, we know you've got her in your hands. Encourage her to keep holding on to your unchanging hands. We pray for my cousin today who's on a ventilator with the coronavirus. Lord, touch his body. Heal him today that he might be made whole. Bless his family, Lord. Keep them in your care as they recover from the coronavirus, Lord. All of those that are on our sick list, we pray you touch right now. Dick and Vaughn's touch his body. Heal him in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for uh, uh, all of those, Master, that needs you right now. We pray for this country, Lord, that you would change the hearts of our leaders, Lord, that you would stir them up to have them to have compassion have love and mercy within their hearts. Lord, we need you right now. We can't get along without you. So, Father, please hear our cry. Forgive us for our sins, Lord, and please heal the land. Lord, we know that there's nothing too hard for you. So we ask it now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. God keep you. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Now, uh, they have given you a survey, and uh, if you have not turned it back in, we ask that you would turn it back in to us so that we can get an idea uh, when to reopen the church. Amen. If you did not get one, uh, you can go online and fill one out and uh, give your uh, request at that time. So please do so, so that we'll know exactly how and when we can reopen the church. Amen. God bless you. We're so thankful for our musicians. Give them a toot up the horn. Amen. Praise God for this male quartet. Give them another toot of the horn. <laughs> Amen. All of our sound technician, give them some love today. Amen. Our officers, give them some love. Amen. As you get ready to leave today, we pray that you will leave your tithe and offerings. Amen. I, I want to thank all of you once again for your love gifts. Amen. Thank you for 
giving online. We really appreciate what you're doing in order to keep the church rolling. We appreciate all that you are doing. Amen. Let us look to the Lord. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest through and abide us now henceforth and forevermore. Let everyone say amen by tooting your horns. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. As you leave it today, please follow the directions of our officers so that we will not have no wrecks in the parking lot. So please follow their direction. You might be dismissed. Thank you so much. May God bless you. Be safe. Amen. <laughs>